<clears throat> Good morning. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Am I five by five? Am I not five by five? Hello. We're going to do that thing where it runs for 30 seconds and then starts over again. Probably the latter. We shall see because nobody in the chat is saying anything currently. 30 seconds up and then it's start over. There it is. How about now? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Good morning to everybody in the chat. Five by five. Thanks, Devin. It is the 9th of April, 2024. This is Coffee Time with Bear, which is similar to a brief, but it's less structured, more conversational. Um, we still require you do all the YouTube things, you know, subscribing, the little bell icon, all that call to action jazz. Share the show with somebody you love if you're, uh, you've been subscribed for a while. Definitely make sure that you haven't been unsubscribed because YouTube does that. And we're like, we're so close to 200,000 subscribers, which is cool. The uh, one week after an EMP video uh, that dropped Sunday is actually doing fairly well. It's the first time um, in half a year the YouTube algorithm has allowed a piece of content that we've done to go to more than 19,000 views. Why we've been capped at 19,000, I have no idea. But I have six months of historic data to prove it. So... Oh, Hami Biscuits is in the chat. Shalom, wife. Oh, there you are. Hello. Uh, of course, the show is brought to you by the creator of the universe who did not rapture anybody yesterday. Um, the fine people at Patreon, link in the description, and uh, Refuge Medical, which I'm the chief shill of, also founder and CEO. Now, either CERN was successful an opening an actual portal yesterday and we are now in an alternate dimension where um we split off <clears throat> from the singularity and we're all still here but in the previous dimension those that believed in john darby's 1830s rapture doctrine they were gathered into the clouds or that didn't actually happen because um, all of the false prophets out there saying that people would be raptured were full of shit because the rapture is non-biblical. And I know for a lot of the non-denominational evangelical uh, believers out there, the concept that the rapture would be non-biblical is probably surprising to you, but I would encourage you strongly to do some research on that because it's not biblical. Uh, a guy named John Darby started this thought process in the 1830s after literally a traumatic brain injury. Um, and it grew in popularity after the American Civil War because the idea that uh, the father would spare his children from more pain and suffering was very popular in the wake of five years of brother against brother, father against son type warfare. But uh, yeah, that, are we gathered in the clouds to meet him? Yes. Is that the rapture? No, it's the same concept as when a king would come into a city, a delegation would be sent outside of the city gates to meet the king, and then they would all come in together into the city. For what it's worth, I've read every word of the book of Revelation on camera at this channel, and I would encourage you to maybe go check that out. I would more so encourage you to flip your Bible open and read it rather than taking anybody else's word, including mine, for what it might actually say. Okay? All right, cool. Um, there were also, that I can ascertain as of this morning, no domestic terror attacks. So that's cool. Asterisk. Apparently, a bridge uh, in New York, there was a merchant vessel near the Verrazano Bridge in New York that seemed to have mysteriously had another electrical malfunction while it was nearing the bridge. However, as I understand it, it was uh, hooked up to two tugboats and the tugs were able to keep 
that merchant vessel from smashing him to the Verrazano Bridge. Now, um, was Lilith real killer bunny? Um, gosh, talk about a rabbit hole. Find me Lilith in the Bible. And then maybe we'll talk. But the Dead Sea Scrolls of Qumran and the non-canonical texts and the, the Talmud. Find me Lilith in the Bible. And which Lilith are you referring to? Are you referring to the false doctrine of Adam's first wife? Are you referring to Lilith as the demon? Or did you read too much Kabbalah and smash the two of those things together? Um, here's what I tell people. Get your area of familiarity with the Bible down first and learn how to do to the best of your ability the two prime directives in Matthew 22, 36. Love the Lord your God with everything that you've got and love your neighbor as yourself. And then maybe when you feel like you're making some progress on that, the basics, then start getting into the more advanced stuff. Um, and I'll tell you, the basics aren't as easy as they sound. Sometimes loving the Lord your God with everything that you've got is way more difficult than you've given it credit. And sometimes loving your neighbor as yourself is way more difficult than you've given it credit. And are some of the more esoteric matters of the word interesting? Absolutely. Should they take away from your attention, your focus, your ability to execute on the two prime directives? No, they should not. So, um, wasn't, Esther said, wasn't raptured, going to laugh all day. Yeah, we're, we're still here. Um, and so, I also wanted to tell you guys, we'll go back to the Verrazano Bridge in a minute. There is a Torah, an instruction for false prophets. If someone says that this thing is going to pass in the name of Jesus or of God, if they prophesy falsely, in the name of the Most High, and it does not come to pass. The Torah says we are not to fear this person. Um, also, and depending on the context, you can hit him in the head with a rock. And fear, the Hebrew connotation of fear is deeply respect. And so whenever anybody in the air quote faith community, notice by the way, their faith community is predicated on your ability to donate to their ministry online and or put a check or dollar bills in the silver plate as it's passed around the auditorium filled with thousands of people. Uh, yeah, it is impossible to serve Elohim and Mammon at the same time. I'm gonna skip over that little burst. But uh, anybody in the air quote faith community that prophesies in the name of the Most High or the name of the Son of the Most High and it does not come to pass, you are not to deeply respect that person. Okay, don't listen to what they have to say ever again. So, um, now, the implication of the eclipse, I've said before, and I'll say it again, I feel like the last eclipse, seven-ish years ago, technically about six and a half years ago, marked the beginning of the fat times and this eclipse marks the beginning of the lean times and i feel that way and it may be not necessarily for everybody and this is important just because i feel that way and i have that conviction doesn't necessarily mean that it applies to you because i have several convictions that the most high has given me that i know for a fact don't apply to you and that's really important okay Whatever the Father tells you is between you and him. Whatever the Father tells me is between me and him. <sighs> Comma. I think the previous eclipse approximately seven years ago marked the beginning of the fat times, and this eclipse marks the beginning of the lean times. Yeah, corn-fed radio. There was an eclipse four months ago. There was an eclipse four months ago. Comma. Genesis 1, the moon, the sun, and the stars are for signs in appointed times. What are the appointed times? Leviticus 23, the Moedim. It's for keeping time, the moon, the sun, and the stars. And those that maybe don't keep Torah and don't observe the new moon festivals, by which we count the days for the Moedim, might not realize that this new moon is in conjunction with this eclipse, which is when you count the days to set aside the ram for the Pesach, the Passover, which is deeply prophetic and metaphorical relating to Mashiach, Messiah. 
So when you have a sign in the heavens in conjunction with appointed times, that's something that's worth paying attention to. <clears throat> so I think this eclipse marked the beginning of the seven years of lean. For my household, I maybe. For the country, I don't know if I'm authorized to speak on that level. For the world, I'll tell you this. Whenever the third testament is written, I'm not entirely sure there's going to be a book of Bear, the man of Elohim, who prophesied to the nations. I don't believe I'm operating on that level. I'm not an Isaiah or a Jeremiah or an Ezekiel. I'm not a minor prophet. Amos, Joel, Habakkuk, Nehemiah, Ezra. I'm a dude with a rectangle and a cup of coffee. Okay, so be careful who you sit on a pedestal, me included. But that's my interpretation for me and my household of the eclipse. And the reason it's worth this past eclipse as of yesterday was worth paying attention to is because I agree, Matt, those minor prophets were anything but minor. They're called minor because they have fewer writings, not because of the impact of their writings. Um, as for me and my household, that's what I believe the significance of this eclipse is. And it bears paying attention to because it's a sign in the heavens in conjunction with an appointed time. It's not just an eclipse on some random Monday. It's in conjunction with when we start counting for the Pesach, the Passover. Okay. The eclipse was a sign to call the nation to repent. Always. Always. But again... Again, Mikael Benya, who are you to speak on behalf of the nation? Who am I to speak on behalf of the nation? Who is anybody to speak on behalf of the nation? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of Yah. Now, we're made whole by the blood of the Son and his redemption. Redeemed. We were redeemed by the blood of a brother back into the house of the Father. There's a Torah for redemption, which Messiah followed perfectly because in him there is no sin. But we are bond servants in the house. After seven years or so, we can be treated as sons. That's a different conversation. But it ties into what's it, Titus? Do not let a new convert be a teacher. Yeah, you're still a bond servant. You're still learning the ways of the house. So who is any of us to prophesy on behalf of the entire world? Yeah, perspective, especially if your own poop's not in a group, right? Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Yehezkel, his wife died. And the next day, the father told him, you will go prophesy to the exiles of Judah. Anybody here? Going through that, anybody here been exiled, the Babylonians came in, smashed all your shit, and you're on a foot movement to some other country, leading the remnant of the father's chosen people, and oh yeah, your wife died yesterday, and today the father has put words in your mouth to go prophesy? I didn't think so. And even then, <clears throat> who did Ezekiel prophesy to? The remnant of the tribe of Judah in exile. Now, is that scripture suitable for reproof and instruction? 100%. Yeah, all scripture is profitable for reproof and instruction. But he was not prophesying to the entire world at that moment. He was prophesying to a small people group. And there's two biblical definitions of what prophecy is. One is what most people are very familiar with, the concept of saying this thing shall come to pass in the future by the name of God. <clears throat> that is prophecy. The other biblical definition of prophecy is speaking the word of Elohim. And if you look at what the men of Elohim did in the word, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Messiah, they spoke the word of Elohim to the people. That's prophesying. And that's why if a prophet is found to be untrustworthy, you are not to fear them because the father's words coming from a man who is not trustworthy is going to bear a false witness. And we're not allowed to do that because people will consider the source as they should and go, if that guy is saying to do this stuff, I don't want to do this stuff. So 
coffee, no rapture, no domestic terror, Verrazano Bridge. Details, at least for me as of this morning, are sketchy, but allegedly a merchant vessel could have smashed into the Verrazano Bridge, lost power, but didn't smash into the bridge because two tugboats were still hooked up to it. And then uh, approximately two minutes later, power was restored again. Worth paying attention to. And as I've told you guys before, S2 Underground uh, has some really good daily little tiny snippets briefs called The Wire that he's putting out. And he's addressed this on a couple of different wires so highly recommend you go check out S2. If you're not already subscribed, go over there, subscribe, tell them the bear sent you. I get nothing out of telling you that other than I want you guys and girls to stay informed. And he's got some really good information. So go away, fly. I will punch you in the face. Um, so no rapture, no domestic terror, uh, some traffic. That was the extent of the impact of the eclipse in our area. I did a quick poll on Patreon yesterday. As of this morning, it's got 250 some results on it, 250 comments uh, asking if people survived the eclipse. And um, yeah, every everybody did. I, no, and to be uh, to be clear, I'm glad there was no domestic terror. Um, there were a lot of agencies hyping this up. And I wonder if it was as a result of circular analysis where, say, for example, you get DHS says that there's a chance for domestic terror threats. And then uh, the FBI picks up on that. And then the FBI says there's a chance for domestic terror threats. And then that gets disseminated down to the state level, you know, through DHS, the law enforcement agencies. And, um, then the state police say there's a chance for domestic terror threat. And then the local police said there's a chance for domestic terror threat. And then you've got four voices, five voices, 27 voices all saying there's a chance for domestic ter telephone game, Batmom, exactly. And then, you know, you got local law enforcement from Oregon to Florida saying there's a, there's a heightened risk of domestic terror. But it all stems from the same source of one report somewhere that somebody put out that said, you know what, there's going to be people gathered in large groups to view the eclipse. And we know that when people gather in large groups, that creates the opportunity for bad actors to do dumb stuff. And so, yeah, let's heighten the risk of domestic terror. Self-licking ice cream cone. Yep. But uh, I'm glad that there weren't any domestic terror attacks yesterday. Uh, that's cool. I'm down with that. <clears throat> um, a couple of other articles I wanted to look at this morning. Good morning to everybody in the chat. Swivel Head Medic says, maybe some agencies prepared the terrorists put it off for an unprepared date. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, part of the reporting or the, the uh, briefs that were going around was that um, law enforcement needed to stay vigilant and alert. Wouldn't our hope be that law enforcement is regularly staying vigilant and alert, not just when there's an eclipse and a bunch of people have been, you know, congregated into an area to watch the sky go dark for a couple of minutes. My hope would be law enforcement is consistently vigilant and alert. Depends on where you are and who you are, I'm sure. Casey Keller said, makes you wonder what we were being distracted from. Yeah. What did Congress pass yesterday that we haven't found out about yet? That's, that's a good point. Um, a couple of things I wanted to look at. This was an interesting article from the wall street journal. I know it's a rag always consider the source. Uh, but this says social order could collapse in the AI era according to two top Japanese companies. Telecommunications company NTT and leading newspaper Yomiuri to issue manifesto calling for new laws to restrain generative AI, the robots. <clears throat> now, you could maybe 
call this racist, but I think it's just successful indoctrination of a 1980s baby. When I think who knows about robots and technology, I think the Japanese. So to me, like subject matter experts on robots and technology, the Japanese, like it, maybe it's the Nintendo's fault. I don't know. Atari, you know, Sega. I, I don't know. But when I hear the Japanese saying, yo, dude, watch out for robots and AI, I sit up and pay attention because I've been successfully indoctrinated into believing that the subject matter experts for robots and AI are the Japanese. So we'll go back to this article from the Wall Street Journal. Dateline Tokyo, Japan's largest telecom company and the country's biggest newspaper called for speedy legislation to restrain generative artificial intelligence saying democracy and social order could collapse if AI is left unchecked. Blah, 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 blah. Restricting some uses of AI, the manifesto points to rising concern among American allies about the AI programs. U.S.-based companies have been at the forefront of developing. <clears throat> the Japanese company's manifesto, while pointing out the potential benefits of generative AI and improving productivity, took a generally skeptical view of the technology. Without giving specifics, it said AI tools have already begun to damage human dignity because the tools are sometimes designed to seize users' attention without regard to morals or accuracy. Unless AI is restrained, quote, in the worst case scenario, democracy and social order could collapse, resulting in wars, end quote, the manifesto said. It said Japan should take measures immediately in response, including laws to protect elections and, a national, and national security from abuse of generative AI. Um, and the article goes on from here. Governments are still struggling to figure out how to regulate AI, blah, blah, blah. Government stepping up oversight, invoking emergency federal powers. The US, UK, and Japan have each set up a government led AI safety institutes to develop AI guidelines. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, it goes on here. It's AI bad, AI bad, what the rest of the article says, AI bad. The collapse of social order leading to war. There's um, a certain line of thought here <clears throat> that if, let, let's, do you have any Reynolds rap handy? Let's just go here for a moment. There's a certain line of thought that if AI can get all the humans to kill each other, um, all of the carbon-based life forms, intelligent carbon-based life forms, aka humans, and I think we should apply intelligent asterisk carbon-based life forms, are gone, then that leaves room for uh, the silica-based intelligent life forms, aka the robots and the AI, to take over the world. Now, they're going to require the successful flow of electrons in order to, air quote, stay alive, right? Like electricity is the lifeblood of technology. Where does that electricity come from? Okay, well, if it's, you know, all renewable, solar and electric, yeah, that's a pipe dream because A, wind power doesn't work when it's not windy and solar power doesn't work when it's dark. B, you got to have all the batteries produced, installed, wired up, and then C, maintenance and service life. These projects that are supposed to last 20 years, like in the case of wind, service life of 20 to 25 years, typically end up having a service life of about 12 years. And then who rebuilds them? Because the steel mills aren't completely robotic. The cranes, like I've yet to see a robot, doesn't mean it can't be built, but I've yet to see a robot that can build a wind turbine start to finish or install a solar panel or like, okay, you got a Tesmec T72 chain trencher and we're going to trench in new power cables for this trench to provide more power. The factory that produced the power cables isn't completely automated. The trucks that loaded the reels of cables and then brought them out to site aren't completely automated okay we need more satellites for gps locations so that the trucks can get from point a to point b 
who builds the satellites and fuels the rockets and puts the satellite into the rocket and launches the rocket in order to put it in place. Like, it's not there yet. And the, the flip side of this, as Jesse Ortiz has said so eloquently in the chat, I have a garden. There you go. Like, that's the flip side of this. Like, yeah, or you could, like, live in the woods with your homies and grow food. I think we all know which choice I've made. Live in the woods with your homies and grow food. <clears throat> um, and so the, the concept that AI is going to destroy carbon-based life form, I think, is uh, at this point a non-starter because silica-based life forms, a.k.a. AI, and I use life forms very loosely, aren't capable of performing all the functions required to maintain their existence, which then leads into, yeah, they don't want to destroy us. They just want to subjugate us and just keep enough of us around in order to be able to do the work to perpetuate the AI. Maybe. Maybe. Even then, like, let's go a different direction in our tinfoil journey here. Is it possible? Yeah, I think it's entirely possible that AI develops to the point that it's an actual existential threat to human life. And again, successful 1980s indoctrination, dude, Terminator. Yeah, I've watched Terminator enough times to be afraid of the robots. Um, but if we get wrapped around the axles on that, to the point that we're not moving to the woods, hanging out with our homies and growing food, like we're fearful. What's the point of existence in the first place? Why? Like, why do any of this? And then you could take it even a step further. I want to live in the woods and hang out with my homies and grow food because I like it not because of the benefits that it has to the survival of carbon-based life forms on planet earth that's a tertiary benefit for sure but i like living this way and we should be able to derive joy from our existence read ecclesiastes everything is vain and futile there's nothing new under the sun so then what do we do let us hear the conclusion of the matter serve Yah and keep his commands for this applies to all mankind okay so just live a good little life then joyously because sooner or later you're going to be warm food you will shuffle off of this mortal coil and what did you accomplish if you lived your life in fear because of the robots or the russians or the north koreans or the iranians or the chinese or your own government or social security cost of living benefits didn't go up or insert whatever here if you lived your life in fear and you never lived to your fullest potential to experience joy and to do meaningful things with people that you love what was the point of existence in the first place they already won if that's the case Right. And so like the best rebellion is to be the you that the father created you to be with confidence in love, doing things that matter and being aware of all these potential threats to carbon based life forms, but not being controlled by these potential threats to carbon based life forms. <laughs> Rotary engine, Pete, epic title trolling dispensationalists. Thanks. Thanks, Pete. Good morning, Iridium group. So you see, like, um, exactly, Palmetto, if you fear Yahuwah, you have no need to fear anything else. And that's kind of my point. So you can be aware of all these things. You should be aware to some degree of these things, but it shouldn't affect how you live your daily life. And that kind of goes back to the fundamental uh, argument of preparedness. Should you be prepared? Yes. Should you be preparing? Yes. Should it be out of fear? No. Should it be that your primary focus in life? No. Your primary focus in life should be living your life in such a way that put it, it puts a smile on the father's face. That should be your primary focus. And then that has the added benefit of if slash when things get stupid, you have a certain hedge built against the potential stupidity. You know, again, Ecclesiastes, there's a time for everything. 
There's a time to gather stones and a time to cast away stones. There's a time for peace. There's a time for war. There's a time for everything. Everything has a season. And so if the season goes from a time to gather stones to a time to cast away stones, what are stones? I have some stones right here. Here's a stone. These are what our stones look like these days. Now, this is a rather small stone, but it is effective. There's a time to gather stones. There's a time to cast them away. There's a time for peace and there's a time for war. So build your house and your life in the time for peace while you can. And then if we shift into a different season, cool. You have some hedge against the crazy that may come. But if you're missing out on the joys of life because preparedness, because there's a thousand different reasons why why you got to be prepared. And you're missing the one reason why you exist in the first place, you've already lost. Like it, your life is already pointless, pointless. AI won. The government won. The Russians won already. One of my favorite quotes. I believe it was Jim Mars, uh, but he produced it in a book. So it may have been a quote from somebody else. It's the, uh, the media can't tell you what to think, but it can certainly tell you what to think about. I love that. And it's true. If you if all your focus is on this worldly bullshit and you're not focused on the father and living your life to your fullest, stepping into the purpose that you were created for in the first place, what's the point? Your life is pointless. Your life is meaningless. You are on a hamster wheel. You've already lost. And so, yes, you should prepare. But the reason we exist is not to prepare. Hopefully that makes sense. Big Timber, situational awareness through YAH. 100%. I appreciate you. That's right, Falcon Eagle Eye. Exodus 15.3. That is my life verse. Brother, what's your life verse? Yahuwah is a warrior. Yahuwah is his name. And the reason I like that rendering in the scriptures is because the Lord is not a name, it's a title. yod heh vav -Heh is his name. In John chapter 17, Messiah says that he has revealed the name of the Father to his apostles. yod heh vav -Heh. Yod means works. It's also an outstretched hand. Hey, it's a little dude in Paleo Hebrew. You stretch out your hand to this little dude. That's love your neighbor. That's the left right commands. Vav. Hey. Vav looks like an upreaching arm. Hey is a dude reaching up to the Father. Love the Lord your God with everything that you've got. Yod hey, Vav hey. And pronunciations. If you're one of those people that gets wrapped around the axles on pronunciations, you need to find a new hobby. Because literally, in uh, Revelation 19, Messiah has a name that no one perceived. Is it Jesus? Is it Yeshua? Is it Yeshua? Is it Yahshua? Is it Yahushua? Dude, when he comes back, he has a name that no one has perceived. Moses asks the father, what is your name? And his response is, I am that I am. Oh. Oh, got it. I am that I am tracking. I exist. Unlike all these other false gods made of wood and stone and iron and gold and silver, I am that I am. That's his name, the great I am. Yod Hey Vav Hey. Love the Lord your God with everything that you got. Love your neighbor as it's as yourself. Why are you here? Said, well, rapture is up to the Father, not unholy creation. Yeah, the rapture doesn't exist, homie. You got to you gotta study up on that one. Um, prior to 1830, not a single church father, not a single historian, not a single pastor, priest, rabbi, bishop, anywhere on planet Earth had any concept of the rapture. John Darby. Google it. Doesn't exist. So uh, 
AI is going to collapse social order, according to the Japanese, so that's something to be aware of. Speaking of other abominations, I found this article interesting. Um, NAIA, this comes from The Blaze, so YouTube, when you give me a channel strike for this, I am reading what is written at theblaze.com. NAIA unanimously votes to ban transgender athletes in women's sports. LGBT, LGBTQ plus groups are outraged. Well, they're always outraged. What else is new? A national college organization voted unanimously to ban transgender athletes in sports on Monday. The Council of Presidents on the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics voted 20 to 0 to expand their previous restriction on postseason competition to all competitions. Quote, we know there are a lot of different opinions out there, NAIA President Jim Carr said to CBS Sports. For us, we believe our first responsibility was to create fairness and competition in the NAIA. Carr added, we also think it aligns with the reasons Title IX was created. You're allowed to have separate but equal opportunities for women to compete. The new policy restricts athletes from competing in female sports to those who were born female. It also restricts those competitions from athletes who have begun masculinizing hormone therapy as part of gender transitioning. Quote, it's important to know that the male sports are open to anyone, end quote, Carr said. Uh, let's see. Council of Presidents Chair St. Ambrose University President Amy Novak explained the reasons behind the vote. Quote, the task force spent nearly two years reviewing research, meeting with experts to better understand potential policy changes and obtaining feedback from multiple membership groups, said Novak. With this policy, the NAIA has made its best effort to allow for the inclusion of transgender athletes in any way which does not impact the competitive fairness of women's sports. She added, our priority is to protect the integrity of women's athletics and allow them equal opportunity to succeed. And then uh, it goes on from there with the LGBTQ plus outrage, which begins with this is unacceptable and blatant discrimination that not only harms blah, 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 which nobody with more than four brain cells cobbled together actually cares about. So I find that super interesting, um, indicative, hopefully, that the pendulum is swinging back the other way. There was a landmark study, I believe, came out of Finland, um, although if you Google it, uh, Google, <laughs> thanks, Sam Off Grid, Mark Safe from the uh, Eclipse Apocalypse, same, me too. Um, if you Google this study, uh, again, on the Google platform, you'll be buried with search results to keep that result from popping up. Uh, was it the Daily Mail that reported on it? 15-year study. 15-year study beginning uh, with children and following those children through adolescence into adulthood, children who were gender confused. Again, YouTube, I'm just reporting here. This isn't hate speech. Um, that is in the nature of pendulums. It is the Iridium group. I'm just glad it's swinging the other way. Oh, speaking of children, there's a group. We gus across the room. Um, but beginning with children, they found that, or they, they interviewed and began keeping information on these children that were um, gender fluid, confused about their gender identity. Followed them through ados adolescent into adulthood. 96% of the children who were gender confused were no longer gender confused as adults and had adopted typical gender norms, gender roles in their life. 96%. Now, there's a huge move right now, underground movement, uh, detransitioning, and people talking about the horrors that they went through to transition and then to detransition, and how basically as children, they were indoctrinated by their doctors and medical staff to begin hormone treatment and to have gender reassignment surgery uh, to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars per individual. And um, 
these people who are detransitioning are saying that they were basically taken advantage of by the medical establishment. Imagine that. And I think um, for some odd reason, since approximately 2019, there's a lot of people that have a certain amount of distrust for people who identify as doctors. I know I do. I know I do. I want to I want to see the data on everything and anything that a doctor is going to propose that I, I take as a course of action. Holyoke Homestarter, 10 bucks. Bless you. Ninety six percent. 15 years, and I believe the study had more than a thousand people in it. So it wasn't a small sample size. Followed them over 15 years. 96% of them grew up to be normal adults. So it kind of puts the kibosh on this whole, you know, children. It, there's people out there who are saying that their infants may be non binary or transgender. No, that's your psychosis being projected onto your child. And I think there's a lot of that going on with this gender reassignment bull crap. Um, one of y'all, I will not dox you intentionally or unintentionally. One of y'all reached out to me uh, and I'll be, you know what, I'll, I'll reach out to you later today and find out if I can discuss the precise details of your situation. But one of y'all of the Bear Nation reached out to me, a nurse in a major hospital uh, in flyover country, one of the last places on earth you'd expect this to be going down. And this nurse and several of their colleagues were let go because they refused to be involved in gender reassignment surgeries based upon their religious preferences. And they were told that they were going to be let go if they refused to provide care to these patients, regardless of their religious preferences. And I told this person, uh, you have a class action lawsuit on your hands and I hope you win. You need to find yourself just an absolute pit dog, pit bull attorney that will rip the throats out of the administration at this hospital. Uh, because they have it in writing that their religious preferences are not going to be uh, taken into consideration. Destroy them. And good on you for not participating in that unrighteous bullshit. Um, they were saying that the they, they did participate in one surgery and afterwards that the, the father just smashed them with conviction that they're not allowed to do this anymore, that it's not right. It's not holy. They cannot participate. And um, good on you. Good on you for going with your convictions because obedience brings blessings. And right now you might be in a very scary period of time in your life, but to Palmetto's point earlier, if you fear Yah, you have nothing else to fear. That's it. You know, Messiah himself says, do not destroy him who can, de who do not fear him who can destroy the body, fear him who can destroy the soul. So exactly, Palmetto, if you make a righteous decision that hurts, Yahuwah will reward you greatly. 100% Deuteronomy 28. It's worth reading. If you haven't read Deuteronomy 28 lately, you should read it today. Because the promise of the blessings and the promise of the curses, if you're disobedient there, are very poignant. They're very real. I live them every day. So this transgender nonsense is way more deeply embedded in the ethos of the country than even I realized that there are major hospitals in flyover country performing these types of surgeries. This isn't just a West Coast or an East Coast situation or a high population density area situation. This is in the middle of nowhere situation. So uh, keep that person and the other people who were let go due to their religious beliefs in prayer. Um, and make no mistake, the the demons refer to themselves as they and them. 
And, uh, you know, this whole thing, all of it, the, it's all an effort, honestly, in depopulation. Andy Frazella has been talking a lot about that on his Real AF podcast. So don't be a ho, share the show. If you guys can withstand, and you should be able to withstand an onslaught of four-letter words, you should listen to Andy. He says a lot of things that ring true. But what I don't think Andy necessarily understands is an F, the effort to kill children and the unborn has been ongoing since the dawn of time. And it's always been in an effort to stifle the seed of Adam as created by, breathed into the nefesh, the soul was breathed into Adam by the creator himself. And there's a prophecy in Genesis that, you know, the serpent will bruise his Messiah's heel, but Messiah will crush his head. And so the enemy has been killing babies from jump. Look at Herod during the time of Messiah. Look at um, the death of the firstborn in Exodus 12. Moshe, Moses, this right here, this shirt from the Pew Pew Jew. Here's these 10 plagues, right? Moshe was one of those babies that was supposed to be killed. That's why they put him into a little tiny ark made of reeds and covered with pitch and put him into the Nile River. Moses was one of those that was supposed to be killed. Messiah is one of those that was supposed to be killed. The enemy wants the babies killed so that strong men of Elohim can't be born to stand up against him, so that Messiah cannot come back again. Now, it's a futile plan. We win in the end, but it's a mark of Satan to reduce somebody's ability through surgical intervention to be able to reproduce and to kill children. So it's not something we should be surprised about, but we should know squarely who we're dealing with when we see this. And is it bad doctors and indoctrination and misled people? Yes. But misled by who? The enemy, Hasatan. So that's coffee time with Bear for today. I hope y'all enjoyed the show. I didn't do a brief yesterday because um, we were busy. Um, there is concrete, more concrete going down at Caleb House today. There's hopefully more electrical going down here at my new house today. Um, and what we got to go find tile for a backsplash. Backsplash tile. Very important mission. Uh, what's up, Buckets and Bibles? Hey, I need all of y'all today, all of y'all. If you liked anything I said in this brief today, you need to go follow Buckets and Bibles. Write it down, write it on the palm of your hand, make a sticky note, go over there right now, follow Buckets and Bibles. And if you're on Patreon in the near future, you'll see some videos that I did with Buckets and Bibles coming up as well. Um, if you like the things that I had to say today, you're going to enjoy the Buckets and Bibles channel. So, and uh, I know that guy pretty well, so I'll vouch for him. OPB, what's up, bro? Ontario Preparedness and Bushcraft. Would vasectomies follow under that out of curiosity? It's a very detailed response that I can't give you at this moment. Um, because there's a lot of nuance in that. Other medical situations, have you already reproduced? Do you do you know, <laughs> I'll tell you this, there's a lot of people who've had vasectomies who uh, still ended up having children. A, that thing can grow back. The vas deferens, it can and many times does grow back. B, if the father wants you to procreate, you will procreate. It's as simple as that. Uh, Sarah in the Bible, Rachel in the Bible, uh, Miriam in the Bible, Elisheba in the Bible, and on and on and on and on. So, yeah. Go check out Buckets and Bibles. Let's see. Patreon, guys, I have got to shoot you a video of the next giveaway. Um, I have it. Um, I haven't filmed it yet, 
because baby and house and Caleb house. And also because it's ballast in my rucksack from uh, the ruckus and I still haven't taken it out yet, but it's an SOE tactical uh, sling bag that I filled up with a bunch of stuff that uh, I will put a post on Patreon this week. Um, and you will comment on that post and follow the directions. And then we will pick one random winner and you'll get an awesome SOE sling bag and filled with a bunch of stuff. So yeah, that's coming. Uh, yesterday on Patreon, I talked about, uh, when to sabbatical and how to sabbatical. Cause I was getting that question a lot. And then of course on Thursday we have our Pelt Patreon exclusive live stream Thursday. So be around for that six 30 central. Bear independent swag. If you want to help fund my wife's tile backsplash of choice, you could buy a coffee mug or a sticker or a patch or a t-shirt. Oh, you should come over to say hi. Yeah. Just want happy. I don't think we've done that. Like, no, I don't. True. I don't think she's seen Gen Pop. Come here, you. Oh, hello. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is the squish. she's going to take a massive dump. Probably. <laughs> this is why we prepare to maintain normalcy for the people that we love. It's not about rifles or war belts or freeze-dried food or gas storage or bug-out bags, bug-out locations, the best fixed-blade knife. Your split times when from your appendix draw with your EDC pistol. This, this perpetuate normalcy for the people that you love. And that begins with maintain normalcy. You have to have something that is normal, something that you love, something that is worth taking care of in order to justify the efforts that you make with preparedness. This is why we do what we do. The most precious thing on earth. And your number one job as a man is husband and father. Okay. Hello. Hello. What's up, Grumpy Gus? That's your number one job. Serve the father and keep his commands. For this applies to all mankind. That this is what matters. Everything else is just a nice to have. You want to say hi? You are looking grumpy, dude. Yeah? Is mommy not feeding you no more? Oh, that's why you're looking grumpy. Stand by. Let's get you. Watch. Dad, watch. Listen, you got to look good for your close-up. You're like the most famous baby on the internet, right? Yeah, okay. All right, here we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. These are the things that matter. This is why we do what we do. Do not get wrapped around the axles on the best battle rifle or should I have this piece of kit versus that piece of kit or whatever. None of that shit matters. It should never matter more than this. And if it does, you got to reprioritize, bro. And that's okay. If you've gotten off the path a little bit, if you've messed up, I've done it. I've done it recently. If you've gotten off the path, if you've forgotten how to prioritize the most important things, press pause, reassess. Oh, I'm sorry. Press pause, reassess, re-engage. Yeah. All right, Squish. You got to say bye now. Okay. Shalom, baby. Shalom. Here you go, mama. Here's her, here's her rag. Oh. Makes me teary eyes just thinking about it. Uh -huh. It does. What a blessing. Rose. 
Hi, Baron Independent. Thanks for going on a rude awakening. You're welcome. Thank you to J.A. Dudley for driving me there. Thank you to the Father for convicting me to go there. Thank you to Katie Lynn for setting it up. Thank you to my wife for holding down the fort while I went pregnant. She was pregnant when I went and did that. Thank you to everybody else on the teams, the Bear Independent team and the Refuge Medical team and the Grindstone team and the Caleb House team who held everything down while I was gone. I get um, I get way too much credit because I'm the face of these things. You guys see me and assume that it's me that does all these things. It is not. I have an awesome team of people that make stuff happen. And so thank you to my team of people that make stuff happen. I'm just the guy that talks at the rectangles, um, by and large. Barry, you're going to make it to SRF in October. That's the hope. I am scheduled to speak at Self-Reliance Festival in October. So as of right now, I'm planning on being there. What's up, Atweb? Let's see. Speaking of Atweb, across the table, Bob is the uh, chief operating officer of Refuge Medical. If um, It's been a while since I've told you guys this, and I just realized this the other day, but I should start saying this again. If you are an agency or a department or a group that needs volume, on your stuff, please reach out to us. You can email admin at refugemedical.com. We'll take care of you. Um, if you are out there and want to do some custom kitting or uh, contract manufacturing, we make stuff out of plastic and metal and ballistic nylon. Admin at refugemedical.com. If you want to buy something from Refuge Medical, use your promo code, Bear Nation. Get your free shipping. And that's not nothing in today's day and age. Uh, and we do have a fair bit of stuff that's back in stock currently. I messed up with the FJB thing. It's not a promo code. It's uh, just ongoing right now at the store. So on kits that are made of plastic, for example, like the buckets, the wound care bucket, birthing bucket, postpartum bucket, there's a drop down down below it on which, you know, do you want a refuge medical hat or a refuge medical tote bag, et cetera, et cetera. That's all That's all there. Um, so it's automatic. And then right now, if you spend, I think it's $199 or more with Refuge, you get entered in to win a $10,000 night vision giveaway. Now, again, not I, I never want to come on here and fear monger with y'all. That's not my point with any of the content that I'm making or to try and get you to go over to Refuge Medical and buy something in a tizzy. If you don't have a medical kit or if you need more first aid stuff, we got you. And I would love it if you would consider us. Come shop the website, reach out to us, use the chat, email us, call the phone number, talk to a human being. We're here to help you. If you're 100% squared away on medical stuff, mazel tov, bless you. One less thing to worry about in your preparedness journey. But we are a resource for you. There are real people on the other end of the phone, on the other end of the email, on the other end of the chat, on the website. That's not a chat bot. There's real people on the other end tapping away with their thumbs to respond back to you. So ask questions, reach out to us, let us know how we can help you. That's why we exist, is to be able to help you in this particular problem set. We're not super ultra high speed. We're, we're not operators. We're not that. We're civilians who have taken the March algorithm as developed by the military and applied that to the civilian sector. And I think we've done a damn good job of it because there's 119 people, military, law enforcement, civilian uh, paramedics who are still alive because of our kits. So we know they work. We don't hope that they work. We know that they work when the shit has hit the fan. We know it's going to work. So, uh, yeah. So, that's that's that. SOB is in stock. Bare minimum is in stock. Go check it out. Refuge Medical. Let's see. What else? Grindstone Ministries, if you need a copy of the Bible and you don't already have one, 
you can come see us at grindstoneministries.com. Grindstone is our disaster relief ministry. And when we're not doing tornado and hurricane stuff, pro bono supported by y'all, we uh, have the audacity to give Bibles away and build restoration facilities for juvenile human trafficking survivors. Yeah. So Grindstone, we stay busy. If it's not, if there hasn't been a hurricane or a tornado lately, we're shipping copies of the scriptures and we're building Caleb House, which is pretty cool. Uh, but you can, there's a link in the description. You can go to grindstoneministries.com and uh, we'll send you a Bible or you can buy one at our cost, whatever you're into. Caleb House, Caleb with a K dot org. Uh, or concrete at Caleb House today. Praise y'all. Um, that's super cool. I'm very happy about it. Trusses are up on the barn, figuring out when we're going to sling the metal. It's been a little windy here and there's a power pole in close proximity to the barn. And so I'm actually going to have the power company shut the power on that leg off, turn it off when we fly the metal. So I got to coordinate that because I don't want a piece of sheet metal to get caught in the wind and arc over to the power line and have somebody get turned into toast. So that would not be good. So there's a little bit of coordination there on that. I met with uh, home builders last week. Care House 1 is good to go. I know where I am going to site Care Houses 2, 3, and 4, although there's more dirt work to do. Imagine that. And I also know where I'm going to house uh, Care Houses 5, 6, 7, and 8, 9, 10. And I also know where the playground is going to go and where the uh, fellowship pavilion is going to go. So we did a lot of like really big, big scale site planning on that. Also considering like, where's the ag barn going to go? Where is the, um, hey, somebody's walking down our driveway. That's the electricians. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We're about to be up. I'm about to be up, bro. It's like, it's almost like uh, dump the Glock mag in between here and the front door, grab the AR off the wall, and then use that AR from there to the truck, then grab that AR, and then, yeah. Um, <clears throat> JC Fixer said, we need to get donating. Hey, to all of y'all that support Caleb House, I genuinely appreciate you. We are 100% privately funded by y'all, by, by y'all, by y'all. Um, we literally could not do this without you. And the fact that the father has convicted so many of y'all to join in with what we're doing, that's humbling. And I really, really try to be a good steward of that. So I want you guys to know, like, work is ongoing at Caleb House. It is a massive undertaking. We're learning a lot as we're performing this massive undertaking. Imagine you had to build a community, a neighborhood in the woods with no infrastructure in a less than ideal, uh, on a less than ideal surface view piece of property. Um, with limited resources and largely volunteer labor. Um, and then maintain operational security the entire time that you're doing it. So, um, Justin Winch, one of those Caleb House patches donations dropping, i.e. patch for five yards of concrete. Justin, we're working on that. Um, I will be having a conversation about that this week. So we're working on it. The idea there is a sticker or a patch like like pour the concrete right and the sticker is or the patches uh 175 bucks why because that's what a yard of concrete costs and then we'll put you know 200 of them in stock at the store because we need 200 yards of concrete or buy the lumber right and there's X number of buy the lumber patches or stickers or um, <laughs> fill the dozer is one. <laughs> It'll be a dozer patch, right? And that'll be at, say, uh, 75 bucks a piece because that's how much D goes on the back of the dozer, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, so we're, we're working on that. That's in process. Um, part of the challenge there is that my primary graphic designer is also the mother of my children. And she's literally had her hands filled for the last 35 days. So, but it is, uh, we are working on it. So that's a Caleb House update in a nutshell. I've got electricians here, so let's talk to the father. And then uh, I got electricians here and I got concrete at Caleb House, which is not close to here. So there's going to be some travel involved. And and we got to go pick out a tile backsplash. And what else? With tile backsplash and what else do we need? There was something else. Oh, I got to measure the glass. You got to measure the glass. Let's just... Let's just make a note here. Backsplash. Glass. Got it. All right. Let's pray. Oh, good morning, Father Yah. Father, you are so, so cool and so good to us, even when we don't deserve it. Father, thank you for myriad blessings. Father, thank you that all of our burdens are blessings, some of which we just haven't figured out how to steward yet. Thank you that your word will not return to you void, Father, and for the covering of the blood of your son, that we might have an opportunity to come home again. Thank you for shielding us from the craziness of the world and those that would prophesy falsely in your name and for giving us your word to know your intent for us for giving us the example of your son that we might walk in his steps. Father, please remember us today as we do our best to remember you. Give us strength and power and authority in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach to do righteous works and to be your hands and feet. Father, pour out your spirit for wisdom and discernment that we would know what to say and who to say it to. Father, and give us peace that surpasses all understanding. Let us focus on you and not focus on the worldly bullcrap. Father, let no weapons formed against us prosper. Put a hedge around all of your people today. And Father, anything within the sound of my voice that's not of you, I rebuke it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and command it to flee. Father, let us be a light unto you, that your righteousness would shine through us, and that when people see us, they would see you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to do that, even as we don't deserve it. And thank you for loving us enough to redeem us back into your house. Father, I lift all these people up. Lay them at your feet and ask that you would please protect them today, provide for them today, and bless them today. In Yeshua's name, Amen. All right. I'm not crying. You're crying. Knock it off. Suck it up. Be a tough guy. Or don't. You know, there's this concept. Um, the left wants you to be a vulnerable man all the time, which is essentially a pussy. And uh, traditional masculine rah, rah, rah says never be vulnerable at all. Um, and I trend in the direction of if you can't be vulnerable with the father, then what kind of relationship do you have with him in the first place? But that's one of just a handful of contexts where I think it's okay as a man to be vulnerable. I think you can and should be vulnerable with trusted brothers for their, to be able to receive reproof and instruction. And so that you can bear each other's burdens and love. But I don't think you should be tracing through life as sopping wet P words. Uh, 
wearing our unjust feelings on our sleeves and complaining to the entire world about how oppressed we are. Because I don't, I don't even think that's accurate. This is oppression. This is what oppression looks like. Exactly, Texas Sheep Lady. Yeshua wept for his brother and for the Father's will in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. That's acceptable. Everything else? Suck it up, buttercup. We got work to do. I hope you all have a wonderful, beautiful day. And uh, I will see you as my schedule permits. Shalom.